my name is Rhea, and today I'm going to be talking about Sega and Sege, the sounds of Mauritius, or Mauritius as we say it, and the result of African diaspora. So I'm from Mauritius, my family's from Mauritius, and it is an amazing culture, and I just wanted to, when I saw this final project, I was like, okay, here's my chance to spread the knowledge about this little tiny island. So here we go. Today I'm going to be talking about the geography and the origin. What is Sega? Sega has its musical power, how it holds power. Sega versus Sege, and kind of showing you the instruments that are involved in Sega, and the conclusion. So Mauritius is an island located in the Indian Ocean east of Madagascar. It's right here little flag really really small island um we speak french creole english some uh indian languages and a couple other languages but the national established language is english so here is a bunch of little islands that also have similar cultures to mauritius seychelles reunion um, they're all located very close to Madagascar, and this plays a very important role in the diaspora of culture. So, the origins of Mauritius. Mauritius was first an uninhabited island. It was actually the island that was full of the dodo bird, in case you guys didn't know. Um, and then that island got colonized by the French, and then the British captured Mauritius from the French, and so they were under British rule. Um, under British rule... Um, African descended people were brought onto sugar plantations as slaves. Slavery was then abolished in 1835, and Indian descended people and Chinese descended people were brought onto the plantations as indentured laborers. So, it's safe to say that the island is a melting pot of cultures with a bunch of different religions and a bunch of different ethnicities. But we're going to see how Sega, influenced by Africa, um, plays the hugest role in the culture. The creation of Sega music. So Sega um, is most likely a Swahili word. Swahili comes from East Africa, Tiaga or Chega, and it is a Malagasy, which means derived from Madagascar art form, traced back to 18th century slaves. So although Sega has these African roots, um, it cuts across the many communities that live in Mauritius and is enjoyed by all of us and all Mauritians of all origins. Um, but this really shows the impact of the diaspora as many people who aren't even African listen to it and enjoy it. And this is a result of highly developed multicultural pluralism, um, as Mauritius is referred to as the rainbow society of people, which means there's so many, so many different kinds of people, but we all fuse together and interchange our cultures happily. So, some key musical instruments in Sega. Um, the violin was the first instrument, first stringed instrument used in traditional Sega, but that kind of got taken over by the banjo and the mandolin. This is the mandolin second, and the banjo is third. And then once the guitar came about to Mauritius, we completely abandoned all of them. And uh, electric guitar and guitar are the main stringed instruments in Sega music. There's... Like, these traditional instruments are really what makes Sega Sega. So the first is the Ravan drum. The Ravan drum is a goatskin drum that actually, when heated, it makes the sound it needs to play. And then the second is the kemb, or the maravan, which the maravan is actually a sugar cane, sugar cane, and you put seeds inside of it, and it makes a kind of rattly noise, kind of similar to maracas. And the accordion and the triangle are the last things that complete the Sega circle. The accordion and the triangle really add different elements into it, and it really makes it the Sega Sega sound. So Sege, a subgenre, is actually, and it, it also marks more diaspora and the influence of African culture. So Sege is adopted Rastafarianism, and it is said to be practiced as like what creates identity as being from Africa and um, it really in illustrates the globalization of modern world cu culture because who would have thought that Sega coming from 18th century slavery could be fused with reggae uh, 
from Jamaica, so which is also African descended people brought to Jamaica. But uh, so basically, it's a fusion of traditional Sega with reggae musical style. So here is Kaya. He's a musical revolutionist. He is the Sege, uh musician. When you think about Sege, or when all Mauritians think about Sege, it's Kaya. And there's a really great story with him. So here is Sege as power. Sege creates power through the music, and this can be seen through Kaya. Um, Kaya identified as a Rastafarian, and his songs expressed Mauritian identity, culture, and roots. He sung about economic disparities and social justice issues that Creoles faced in Mauritius compared to other inhabitants, and songs like Mochizil, which inspires the people and leaves them with a really, really strong message. He was very vocal about his um, passions and was arrested, actually, for smoking marijuana at a demonstration advoca advocating for legalization of marijuana. Um, and when he was arrested, he actually passed away in police custody, and this created huge riots throughout the, throughout the island. It was a huge outbreak of violence that actually led to a couple of casualties, but it really, really demonstrates the social impact that he had through his music and through his messages. His supporters looked to him as a musical martyr of uh, Creole justice and rights. So here we have Sega and Sege. I'm going to show you kind of the differences between them and show you the instruments in Sega that we have explored today. So this is a song called Mutia by Elijah and Lindsay Bakbot. And we're going to see a lot of the instruments that I have included pictures of, like the Ravan, Maravan, and the triangle. Unfortunately, there's no accordion in here, but you can definitely hear some banjo or, or mandolin notes. So I really want to take a listen and we're going to see these instruments in play. <laughs> So I saw the triangle, the Ravan, the Maravan, and uh, I think that's about it that they showed in the video. Uh, but these are really key instruments in developing that Sega sound. And you can really see how the Ravan, the drum, the goatskin drum, it really dictates how the melody of the music is. It dictates the rhythm and all the instruments follow the Ravan. So the Ravan is the thing that sets it into motion, that sets Sega music into motion. Okay. Now we're going to explore Sege music, and I want you guys to kind of listen to, it has a traditional reggae sound, but there is a back note of traditional Sega rhythm, and uh, if you really listen to it, besides the traditional reggae like rhythm, it's in the back notes, it's a little bit further behind, but you can kind of hear it, we're going to listen to it. So I can definitely hear the Ravan, I can hear it very faintly, and I can, I can also hear the electric guitar, um, and I can hear that back note. Um, but So this is Sege, and this was very, very revolutionizing because it doesn't, it doesn't really sound like, you know, traditional Bob Marley reggae. It has its own Sega twist to it, which you can kind of hear if you compare it to, like, traditional Bob Marley songs. So... Yeah, this is Kaya's impact, and uh, I didn't even want to end that song because it was so good. But yeah, this is called Chant L'Amour, which is love song. All right. Conclusion. Um, the African diaspora created a music style native to Mauritius called Sega, and it was founded on the bringing of slaves to the island and their Malagasy culture, and even the term Sega, could have Swahili influence, which is also East African. 
Um, Sega uses globalized instruments and also cultural instruments to have its own specific sound. Along with Sega comes the influence of reggae and Rastafarianism from Jamaica. Um, and not only Jamaica, it's the African descended people from Jamaica, which also in, in like introduces more African diaspora into the equation. And that produces Sega, which is um, still here to this day. And Sega and Sege are both used as songs of the people, but Sege has really illustrated its social power, especially a scene in the death of Sege musician Kaya. He really hit people through his messages in his songs, and that was very evident in the uprising and uproars that happened later. And yeah, I hope you guys uh, not only learned a little bit about Mauritius, but also about its culture and its music, and it's an African descendant and like Creole, basically Creole influence on the country. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching 